I'd like to say good morning to the class. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Felicia Hamilton and I will be your moderator for this session. Welcome to another lecture given by members of the Southfield, Michigan class. This is a school and not a church. Neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Southfield, Michigan class was established in 1997. The dean of the Southfield, Michigan class is Dr. Marvin Lewis, and our vice president is Dr. Rhino Atkins. In this school, we use the true correct and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Greek language, the Hebrew language, nor the Latin language had any letters or characters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the Word or Son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood and divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plain as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation and we must know that name. 
So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and the function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The primary aims and constitutional objectives of the class are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstitions, skepticisms, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose, operating throughout eternity through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating in the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. At this time, we would like to have the class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Pedro Dominguez followed by scripture, which will be Hebrews chapters 7 and 8, read by Dr. Rhonda Walker. Good morning, class. Good morning. Uh, let us bow our hearts and our minds and... Uh, so we can give thanks and say thank you to Yahshua for bringing us here together uh, to assemble once more uh, uh, under these under these uh, these uh, circumstances uh, with the trying times and with the hard times coming and everything. We all need to be here in class. Let us all realize that we 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 should be in class at when the proper time and uh, and be uh, available. To understand and for you to please give us understanding that we ask in Yahshua's name, holy name, prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Good morning, class. Good morning. I'll be reading from the Holy Name Bible. Hebrews chapter 7. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High El, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace, whose father and mother were not recorded in the genealogies as such, neither the beginning of his day nor end of his life, but being a representation of the son of Yahweh for the continu the count continue I'm sorry, countenance of the priesthood. Now, consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch Ab Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. And verily, they that are of the sons of Levi, who receive the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is, of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. But he whose decent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham, and blessed him that had the promises. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed by the better. And here mortal men receive tithes, but there he receiveth them of whom it is witness that he liveth forever. And if I may say so, Levi also, who receiveth tithes, paid tithes in Abraham. For he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe, of which no man gave attendance at the altar. For it is evident that our Savior sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. And it is yet far more evident, for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest, who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. For he testified, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. For the ceremonial law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto Yahweh. And inasmuch as not without an oath, he was made priest. For those priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath by him that said unto him, Yahweh swore and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. By so much was Joshua made a surety of a better covenant. And they truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But he, because he continueth forever, he continueth ever, hath unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the ut uttermost that come unto Yahweh by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercessions for them. For such a high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. Who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins, and then for the people's. 
For this he did once when he offered up himself. For the law maketh men high priests, which have infirmity, but the word of the oath, which was since the law, maketh the sons who is consecrated forevermore. Chapter 8. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which Yahweh pitched and not man. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices, wherefore it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of Elohim when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is a mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with it, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with the fathers in the day when I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith Yahweh. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith Yahweh, I will put my law in their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be their Elohim and they shall be my they shall be to me my people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know ye Yahweh, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I will, I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. And that he saith, a new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. I've read Hebrews chapter 7 and 8. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Dr. Dominguez, for the prayer and Dr. Rhonda Walker for the scripture. We want to once again welcome everyone out to class this morning. We're happy you could join us live and on YouTube. Before we begin, we'd like to remind everyone to please silence all your cell phones or electronics so as not to disturb the speakers in the floor. And for our first speaker, we're happy to have Dr. Diane Atkins. First, I'd like to say good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? Um, so thankful Yahweh has given me, given us all, another opportunity to learn of him how he really is and how he actually exists. Of course, when I was in the world, they told me something totally different. They didn't tell me that I could know my creator as he really is and actually exists. Um, it's a lot of things that they, they don't know. It's a lot of things I didn't know, had no idea. Um, but Yahweh has to, can I get um, 
I want to say John 15, 16. He's not chosen. You've not chosen him, but he's chosen you. That scripture, if you don't mind. Because in the world, like I said, we're not taught that we can learn anything about our creator. We're taught it's God's business. Um, let him do what he's going to do. You don't question. You don't ask. And I was that told that from a little girl. From a little girl, I did what I was told. But it's, it's funny how <laughs> when Yahweh, can I have that scripture, please, John? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Thank you. That's 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 fine. I wasn't looking for nothing. I wasn't looking for Yahweh. I didn't know I, I was supposed to be seeking him. I didn't. <laughs> and that scripture, when I first heard, I had never heard that scripture before. You didn't choose me. I've chose you. You didn't run anything. You never did. Had and and it's I'm so thankful because I I served the world I served I didn't know what I was serving mm. I did what I was told from a little girl gathering everybody going to church from a little girl nothing you know everybody did that everybody went. That's what we did as, 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 and as we grew up, for the most part. But then, when Yahweh chose me and introduced himself to me, and finding out that his name was Yahweh, I remember the first class I sat in. Yahweh brought me in and set me down. I was offended. How can you tell me after all these years, his name is Yahweh? And the thing about a fact is just because you don't believe it does not make it so a fact. It's a fact. And the reason why Yahweh is his name, firstly, there is no J. That's right. That's right. When I first heard that, I was like, uh-uh, no. <laughs> right. Uh-uh. Right. I looked it up because this, this is a school. Right. And in our natural lives, when we go to school, we have to look things up. Okay. Let me get the, the, the point of what, what this is. I need to understand this. I have to look it up. And I'm one of those people that I have to read things over and over and over. But it's okay because when I looked that up and saw that it says no... There, there, no J in the Greek or Hebrew, not even in the English, until the 17th century. His name couldn't have been this. And it still isn't. Couldn't have been this, and it still isn't. His name is Yahweh. Yahweh Elohim and Yahshua. Jesus Christ ain't never saved nothing in this, nothing. There's nothing, there's nothing about this that means anything. That was hard for me. That was hard for me. All my life I've been saying this. But the wonderful thing is that Yahweh knew that. He know I didn't know anything. You know, I couldn't explain anything. He knew that the journey that he put, the path that I was on, he, he, he knew that I didn't know. 
So although I was offended by something that I thought was the truth, wholeheartedly, going to church, I mean, I was, I was there, involved in what I could be involved in. Then you come to the truth and you, and you ignore it or you don't give it what, what it deserves to be. Right. You don't. I didn't. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't still working on me with that. Mm -hmm. And I know that that's the name. I didn't know this was the name, but you couldn't tell me it wasn't. And you couldn't tell me that I wasn't involved in that thing like it wasn't nothing. It was my, that was what I, that's what I did. Hmm. That's what I did for so many years, for so long. But like I said, Yahweh knew that I didn't know. That's why that scripture, you didn't choose me. I chose you. And because I chose you, I'm gonna chose you, I'm gonna give you away. Romans 1, 19 and 20, please. I'm gonna give you a way to understand something about me. Um before I, before Yahweh introduced himself to me, I, I didn't had nothing to think about. I just thought I was just, I was the one. I was doing this. I was coming around. I was, I was in the world. I was doing what the world did, and it was okay, and I'm going to be all right. And <sighs> but then, let me have that, please. That's Romans 1 and 19. Because that which way may be known of Yahweh. Okay, because that which may be known of Yahweh. Never heard that scripture. And if I did, I didn't know what it meant. I didn't care. Honestly, I didn't. But no reason for me to. When I heard that the first time in this class, I think Dr. Um, Adkins was, was, had, had asked for the scripture. And I was like, what does that mean? Because that which may be known of Yahweh you can go ahead, baby. Thank because you. that which may be known of Yahweh mm -hmm. is manifest in them. Mm -hmm. For Yahweh has showed it unto them. <laughs> For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Wow. E Even okay. his eternal power mm -hmm. and Godhead, I'm sorry, supernal nature, so that they are without excuse. Okay. So... With that scripture, that's a mouthful and a half because I was just flabbergasted when I heard that. Because that which may be known of Yahweh, it's clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made and what's been made. He's made everything. Nothing escapes him. Nothing, nothing is outside of him. But when you're in the world and you're trying to walk as the world walks, not knowing that you're walking in the, the to, like today, you still, if you're in the world and you, you don't have no understanding of what's really going on, you're walking in darkness. And Yahweh has to come in. He has to invite you in. He has to sit you down. He has to give you an understanding. You can't even understand this by yourself. He don't, he, he, you can't. It's no way. Like I said, in the world, when we wanted to understand something, we used to read and make sure we, you know, dotted our I's and crossed our T's and all of that. But then when it comes down to something that's true, and that stuff that we, I learned in the world was a lie. Every bit of it. Because when Yahweh came in. He knew that I didn't know him. He had to break himself down. He had to do that for me and for us to understand. And not only that, when he broke himself down, he had to come and feel the same thing. He had to come in a body, walked around, same thing. All the things that I go through physically, all the things. You imagine that? Can you imagine it? So, you know, it's, it's, this is a beautiful gospel. Absolutely.
absolutely beautiful. I love the moderation. Yahweh has really been giving me a thought process to, to read the moderation, to listen to it. I listen to it every day. One of our um, brethren had admonished, you need something spiritual every single day. That's right. You, you honestly need it every single day. You have to eat physically. And that's why that Romans 119, I never would have connected that. Right. <laughs> never would have connected that. Because right. the invisible things of him are clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made. Like I said, everything was made by Yahweh. He made it all. So we know we physically have to eat. We spiritually have to eat something. And this is the truth. <laughs> All the garbage I done gobbled up in the world. <laughs> Just eating it up. Wholeheartedly, not even thought, no process of thinking it. Hey, I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm doing me. And it's not even about me. That was hard for me, too. I walked around thinking that I was this. I wasn't nothing. But I do know Yahweh. He set me down. He chose me and set me down to learn of who he was or who he is, how he actually exists, how our bodies are a tabernacle, just like the tabernacle. We have a chest, a, a head cavity, a chest cavity, and a in our, in our uh, 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 abdominal. abdominal region. Thank you. Never thought about that. Who cares? I thought about it. It means so, so much. And it's such a different meaning to it now because Yahweh has given me an understanding. And it's a lot I don't know. But he knows that. But I do know his name is Yahweh now. Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua the Messiah. And these three are one. They teach in Trinity in the world. This is one. Your body is one body. Head, chest, abdominal. One. Never thought about a pattern. I didn't know anything. I knew that we had breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Right. I know we use a knife. Never, come, never had the thought to even put the, We couldn't. I couldn't. Right. Yahweh had to come and show me that. Only he can do that. Only he can show you. He can sit you down. The reason I can say this is because he's done it for me. He can sit you down. He can tell you his name. He can introduce himself to you as he's done. And he can explain this. He can give you an, a, a reason. He can give you an explanation. He can give you an understanding that the world could never do. I'm so thankful for that. I'm so grateful to be here. And I ask Yahweh all the time to keep me. Just keep me. Because it's crazy out here. It's crazy every day. You see something a little more crazy than you saw the day before. And I just ask, just, just keep me, Yahweh, because I'm no different. I'm, well, I wasn't any different than anybody in the world, but except for the fact that Yahweh chose me. <laughs> he's chose me. And he's given me an understanding. He's given me his name. I'm introduced to someone, you're introduced, you, you, the first thing you say, your name. That makes sense to me. That makes absolute sense to me. Now, and like I said, the only way anything is understood is by Yahweh giving it to you. And I ask him for it. I ask him for it all the time, Yahweh. Whatever it is you want me to understand, give it to me if that's what you want me to have. And I'm so thankful that he does, and he has been. Um, it's a lot of things that, that's on my mind, but I, like I said, I'm just grateful 
thankful that Yahweh chose me. Not everybody could have chose. He chose me. And I'm forever grateful for that. And it's the only thing he asked us to do is to believe. We believe. I, be I believed everything else. Anything, somebody, oh, you're yeah, okay, yeah. Anybody get, oh, oh, that's right, that sounds right. Uh, not look nothing up, didn't care to look it up. Just accepted it. But, and it was all wrong. Every last bit of it was wrong. Because see, when Yahweh chooses you, he has to give you a way to understand him. He don't just choose you and say, you know, like in, in the world, in the church world, they choose you to be in this. They choose you. Now, you know, whether you want to be or not, it's just, you know, you can do what you can't do. I mean, but when he chooses you, he's going to give you a concrete way of how he is and how he actually exists. And it has nothing to do with where is this? None of this. None of this. It has nothing to do with none of this. I was, just, I was like shocked. I was like the only thing that I was kind of like, ooh, good, huh? I mean, I mean, because you know, out here we out here. I'm doing all of these things, right. trying to, but not understand the significance of the fact that when He died on this cross, that took away this. So that means if He did this, and He did. When he died on the cross, and then we continue to do the things that he has nailed to the cross, we're saying he lied. Creator don't lie. Yahweh don't lie. Can't lie. It's about him. He knows himself. He knows this story better than anything, anybody. He knows who he is. So these things, mm. Think about that. All that time I was in the world doing those things, or trying to, as I said, because it wasn't going to keep nothing right. Nothing right. Nothing right we were going to do. That's why he had to come in, take this out, and give us a New Testament. It's written in our heart or mind. And it has nothing to do with nothing physical, because Yahweh is spirit. I didn't know that. I've seen that. I've seen. I've heard that scripture. God is spirit, but never understood what it was because they couldn't explain that to right. me. They had no. They still don't know. Have no idea. That's why I said I'm so thankful that Yahweh has set me down for what I do know. I do know His name is Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua, the Messiah is our Savior. No other. I mean, and once, once. Yahweh has chosen you and set you down. You're never the same. I, I, I'm not the same. I can't be the same. I wouldn't even know how to be that. Because, and that's only because of Yahweh. It's nothing about me. That's only because of Yahweh that he keeps you. He keeps you. He sits you down. He holds on to you. Only because of Yahweh. And I'm thankful for that. And with that, I'd like to say hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Atkins, for that beautiful testimony. And before I announce our uh, next speaker, I'd like to remind everyone again, please silence all electronic devices and we want to welcome back our member Dr. Martu Fleshman it's so good to see you and welcome back <laughs> and for our next speaker of the afternoon we're happy to call Dr. Shirley Nelson Silence those cell phones. Thank you. <laughs> I like to say good morning. good morning. 
And I am very glad to be here today, I'm very happy to be here. I feel privileged to be here today because we are in the very best place that we can be. I thank Yahshua for everything. I give praises to him and grateful for his mercy that he has bestowed on me and for all of us. Uh, we've come down to a time in our lives where it is absolutely necessary to know something for sure about our Creator. And the things that we learn down in this school, they, this is the school of the highest learning, not, as we, not us who sit in here in this building, but the highest learning, what we're learning and where we're learning it from. And I am just so grateful to be used as a vessel that will preach this gospel. And that's all I want to do. I pray that Yahshua just allow me to continue to be used as that vessel of honor because we have a lot of stuff going on out here. And what he's showing me day by day through tribulations and through trials, which we all have, is that he's the only one that's with us and that can do anything. So it's really a blessing to even go through the trials that Yahweh puts us through. And there's a scripture that refers to that. I'm not going to tax you guys too much, but I know it's something, the um, trial of your faith, I think is what it talks about. I don't know what that's at, but if you can pull it up real quick, um, you know. But it is something that Yahshua is showing and sharing with us because it's through by that that we do grow. But I am thankful, as I said, did you find it? If you didn't, don't worry about it. We're not going to, like I said, stress a lot on it. Okay. One and seven or uh, seven. Okay. Oh, seven. One and seven. So that, so that the genuineness of your faith, which is much more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested and purified by fire, mm -hmm. may be found to result in your praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Yahshua the Messiah. And it's a word a little bit different than what I remember, but nonetheless. I have it. You want it? I have it. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's what in the King James Version it does say, the trial of your faith is more precious than... Oh, Did I you want it out of King James? Sure, sure. Just read it since I mentioned okay. it. That the trial of your faith mm -hmm. being much more precious than the gold that perishes, mm -hmm. though it be tried with fire, mm -hmm. might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yahshua the Messiah. There you go. See, and that is extremely important because when you know anything about gold even and how it's purified, you know, and it's put under that fire, see, and so it's no wonder that I think this is Paul that's talking that put the two together like that. It's more precious than gold, see, because it does what? Though it be tried with okay. fire, okay. might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yahshua the Messiah. And that's the goal. Right. That's what you want. It's not what you go through, but it's how you come out of it. Mm -hmm. It's how Yahweh brings yes. you out and then where you have been placed as a result of it. Mm -hmm. So don't take it lightly. Don't bemoan it too much because Yahshua is always showing us something, no matter what it is that we might have to go through. So again, I am just happy to be able to have anything to say. I'll just see where Yahweh's going to lead me. I love scripture reading. Uh, I was, it was funny. I was talking to one of the people that's in this building here and asking him, inviting him to class. And that's been my prayer, too, is to ask Yahshua to allow me to be able to open my mouth more about this gospel. Because what you know is precious, and somebody else may not have been given that opportunity. But we walk around people every day and may not take the time. And so that's what I've been asking for in my car. And I walked right into the building here and had an opportunity to, to say something. Whether they follow through with it is one thing, but we always want to be ready and willing to preach this gospel, no matter what. It's not, I don't care about Shirley but I want to be doing the work of my Savior. See, what he has given you this knowledge to do 
And because it wasn't just for us to hold and sit on our seats and we just got it all contained in us, but it is to share and to preach. See, because it's through by the true preaching of the gospel of Yahshua Messiah, which is the kingdom. See, that's the true gospel. It's through by preaching that, that we do have eternal life. Now, the moderator told you that this is a school. This school is, is this gospel is, is a result of a divine vision given to Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year of 1931. Dr. Kinley says he had a vision by Yahweh, the creator himself. Then he went on to prove it. And ever since 1931, this school has stood. See, it was through by this school, and this doctrine has been preached. It was through by this school, see, that these are through Dr. Kinley's vision that these various charts were drawn up that allowed us to have some kind of understanding, pictorial form, of what it is that Yahweh is doing. And prior to that, didn't nobody have a clue. We had everything wrong, even his name, as I shared with the gentleman this morning. See, we didn't know that there was one who was going to come in to deliver and save. What was he delivering us from? See, that sin or that death or that condemnation that had passed upon all men, see, as a result of this transgression here. See, because when this Adam was placed in this garden, now look, this is the chart on the pattern or plan of salvation. Yahweh is not without a plan. He has never not been without a plan. Everything that he has done has been purposed and orchestrated from the beginning of time. And as he has said in many of his transcripts, he's talked about even before the foundation of the world, Yahweh knew who you were. He knew who will sit here before you were born. What kind of, what kind of creator is that? See, and then people want to say that he doesn't know or nothing was predestined, see. Well, we know what true predestination is, but we also know that Yahweh had a plan and that he purposed you to be one that was going to be a recipient of this gospel even before you were in your mother's womb. Right. And that's what he said. See, Dr. Kinley said those things. So, you know, we just say that, look, he, Dr. Kinley also was so interesting how he mentioned, he said he declared the end from the beginning. How could he not know what's going to go down? How could he not? See, we think that we just happened onto something. You know what I'm saying? We just happened to do this or we just happened to do that. No, Yahweh has orchestrated everything, even as Dr. Kenley said, the menanderings of your own mind. See, he's caused us to be sitting right now in heavenly places. And he's telling me every single day, don't take this for granted. It's a real thing. Whether, you know, it was a, somebody on TV just this morning I was listening to, I think it was a recent president, Carter, I think I heard, said so he just celebrated his 99th birthday, 99 years. And then you got babies that don't make it for past a day or two or whatever. So it doesn't matter what is that purpose that has been set for you, whether you do that forever in, an a, in a day, live this life or not. The reality is, is that this life that we be looking at here, this one here, this one was never meant to last forever. It was never going to be your final destination. And Yahshua is telling me that more and more was never going to be that, no matter how we thought. He always had something else prepared for us. And so what I've been asking him is to let my mind dwell more on what is to come. See, in other words, when you shed this flesh, not be so involved about this physical body, see, that is temporary. You know what I'm saying? We're in here for a moment, for a time. But when he takes you on, that's eternity. And where are we dwelling? That, look, the knowledge and understanding that we learn in this flesh that we're in, it never dies. This Holy Spirit that he allowed to us to have as a result of the preaching, it's eternal. And he is just showing me that more and more and more. It's eternal. It does not die. So now look. I don't know. I'm just going everywhere, I guess. But now it was through by this, this chart on the pattern or plan of salvation. When I first came into the school, I used to read that and couldn't even figure out how those words went. It sounded off. I don't know if anybody was else like that. The chart on the pattern or plan or salvation just sounded confusing to me. 
But that's what it is. It's a chart, and this is a pattern. It's a plan of salvation. See, because through that, it seems kind of simple now. And through it, you never know, well, where are you going to go with that, see? What is it all about? But Yahweh wrote a story, see? And the story is still going on, see? See, but he wrote a story, and he placed a man in the garden, see, here, see? And in this particular state, see, we come to find out that even these charts written down or laid out like this, the tabernacle or like a pattern. It's threefold. See, these charts, that's for a reason. Here at this top, the top of the chart, even here at the bottom, it's for a reason. See, it's set up a particular way and in order. I mean, it's phenomenal and it's beautiful. See, but that man, see, was placed in this garden, and in this garden here, when you look at these charts, I mean, it's animals up in here, and it's the man, it's the woman, you see what I'm saying, and then you see an angel here, but this was illustrating, as Dr. Kinley said, they were likened into a heavenly state up here, see. This is, this, in other words, see, this transgression plate is a, is a downward, goes into a downward more, because they started out, you see, in this heavenly state, see. And Yahweh gave the man a commandment, see, up here in the garden. In this garden, they were innocent. They were, they were safe. They were in a heavenly state. They were being taken care of. They had no regard for anything. All they knew was joy. You see what I'm saying? That was here. See, and Yahweh gave the man a commandment while the woman, which is likened to the bride, was yet still in the man. And he told him, he says, now, of every tree, because he placed him in this garden. And see, when he placed him in the garden, he didn't, the man didn't have to wait for the trees to grow up. The garden was in his own fruition when he placed him in that garden. And he says, of every tree that's in the garden, you may freely eat. But of that tree that's in the midst of the garden, don't touch it, don't eat it, at least you die. You see what I'm saying? So now once the woman was taken out of the man, see, now she's subject to being deceived, see. And that's why Satan, and all that is, is a principle, showing forth as I said that the woman is likened unto the bride. So it is the woman or the bride, the subject, or is capable, that can be deceived, see. Unless Yahweh, see, causes it not to happen. But Yahweh has a purpose, see. And people say, you know, if Adam and Eve didn't do what they did, we'd still be in paradise. Not because they had no choice but to do what they did. Because Yahweh had already told them, see, to be fruitful and multiply. And when they were in this heavenly state, it was no way that Adam was looking at Eve and Eve was looking at Adam. Now, we didn't never think of that. We never thought of that when we were in church. We didn't know that. Why? Because they're in a spiritual state. They're not thinking about the flesh. But Yahweh told them, see, to be fruitful and to multiply. You see what I'm saying? So they had to come on down out of this. In other words, they had to come down into the flesh, so to speak. So they're here now. And so when that woman partook of the fruit, see, of the tree, see, if you will, and that was Satan who duped her, Satan knew what Yahweh told Adam and Eve while she was in them. And that's why he was able to approach her to deceive her with the very words that she thought she knew. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And he said, did Adam, Adam him say that you can eat of every tree of the fruit of the garden? And she had to correct him, say, no. We say that we may eat of every fruit, but of the tree of good and not of the knowledge of good and evil, we shall not eat it, at least we die. And what did he go on to say to her? You shall not surely die. Because, see, he knows a little bit about something, too. So, you know, she wasn't going for it, and she didn't. And I was recently talking to someone about that, too. Look, Adam lived 930 years. Right. His physical body did not die that day that Yahweh said that he would die. First of all, we come to understand that Yahweh is talking about an eternal day. These are things I learned here. I didn't know this before. It's an eternal day. No beginning, no end. And now it's eternity. You see what I'm saying? He says, so he's talking about, look. This here, when he says, you will not surely die, see, yeah, he, 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 he's talking about from that, that he knew that he, wasn't going to spirit, that he wasn't going to physically die. So this physical life here that took place, see, it went on for 930 years. But when Adam partook of that fruit, or Eve did, and then gave to her husband, he did eat too. See, they died instantly. And I, I don't know why I always go here, but I want you to go and get that. In Genesis, where it talked about they were 
uh, in the garden and they were naked and they were not in shame. And I'm going to tell you something. And the reason why I like to say it, because I have sat on my seat for years and it, I mean, years before I saw that. See, I didn't see that in the Bible. Where does it say it over there in Genesis? They were naked and, and they were not ashamed. That's the state and condition. We're talking spiritual. They were naked and they were not ashamed. Mm -hmm. Read. 2 and 21. Mm -hmm. Genesis 2 and 21. And Yahweh caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he mm -hmm. took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib on which Yahweh had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And, and Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Okay. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife mm -hmm. and they shall be one flesh. Okay. And they were both naked and the, and the man and his wife were not ashamed. See, they were naked and they were not ashamed. See, now find over there where they were ashamed and they hid themselves. See, because once that was before they partook of that fruit, then once they partook of that fruit, now they're sowing fig leaves together, see, to hide themselves. Why? Because something happened. You see what I'm saying? See, something <coughs> Okay. Did you find that? Mm -hmm. um, that's Genesis 3 and uh, Okay, I'll start at 1. Mm -hmm. Genesis 3 and 1. Mm -hmm. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Yahweh Elohim had made. I didn't want to do a whole, didn't want to read all of it, but go ahead. Go okay. ahead. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath Yahweh said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Mm -hmm. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Yahweh hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. You see how she corrected him? Read. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Ye shall not surely die. Read. For Yahweh doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, mm -hmm. and ye shall be of God's mm -hmm. knowing good and evil. Mm -hmm. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eye, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, mm -hmm. she took of the fruit thereof mm -hmm. and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. That's right. And they and the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. See, then, <laughs> after they partook of that fruit, now their eyes are open. Mm -hmm. And that's not to say they were walking around with their eyes closed, but their eyes, see, they were open now to the flesh. You see that? First, they're just all spiritual. That's why they're not looking at each other. They're not, you know, thinking about having sex and all of that stuff, you know, like mankind be thinking, you know. Mm -hmm. But their eyes were open, see, it says. Mm -hmm. See, to the flesh now. Now they see it physically. Read. And the eyes of them both were open, mm -hmm. and they knew that they were naked, mm -hmm. and they sewed fig leaves together and, and made themselves shame. aprons. So when they partook of that fruit, condemnation at that point entered into that man mm -hmm. see now he's condemned because he diso because of that disobedience mm -hmm. you see that and now I need you over there in Romans death passed upon all men because this event was what appeared to be an isolated event but yet and still it had the effect on all of mankind mm -hmm. see that's how Yahweh he's working a purpose to bring the man down why because his ultimate purpose is to bring in salvation see so that's what he's going to do so he's bringing this man down see putting him in jeopardy condemnation destruction you see what I'm saying just so that he can turn around and bring him up again and then that's this is pretty too how the Yahweh say recently we were talking about how the Yahweh had this transgression plate see right up over the death burn resurrection because, see, the same, this event that took here, and I won't go into it, but we have a lecture that just recently went on, that talked about how that this here, when Yahshua Messiah came in, died there in resurrection, see, it was the same time, you see, once he, when he was condemned, Yahweh had already prepared salvation for him. Simultaneously, that's how Yahweh works. 
Because that's what he's showing me, even my little life. You see what I'm saying? Everything is purpose. At the same time, he's fitting these pieces in together. And there's nothing that we can do about it. Nothing. Whether we like it or not, he's got the purpose already set up. So all I want to do is learn it. All I want to do is understand it. See, have it in my heart written as we talked about that new covenant. See, this is where we're at. We're sitting in heavenly places when you have the Holy Spirit in you with an understanding. See, that's what he's showing me. Heavenly places. We are the best of both worlds. But nonetheless, if you will, if you can say it like that. See, so here we did. They came on down in condemnation, showing the angel driving Adam out, see. And then Yahweh showing here, here, through by this vision, how the Adam had to work from the sweat of his brow, see. And says, so all the days of your life, that's what will happen with you. And for the woman, now remember I told you the woman was representing that us see there is an assembly if you will so it was through the woman he said through childbearing you shall be saved see and we're looking at it from a natural standpoint thinking you're going to be saved if you happen to die when you're having a baby or something through childbearing you're saved no it's talking about because it's through the loins of a, a woman that the savior was going to come through so it's through that childbearing see i've already see orchestrated salvation is already going to take place one had to come in see by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin likewise by one man yahshua the messiah see he's got to come in see and take away that sin of the world see he just fixed that thing completely see so down here so in this play here we are literally talking about the death the burial and the resurrection Adam dies see up in here buried in condemnation the woman shall be saved in childbearing you see what I'm saying now Paul talked about this being the doctrine of the kingdom see or the gospel of the kingdom and I want you to get that over there in 1st Corinthians 15 chapter 2 which is that death that burial and that resurrection according to the scripture see God is seeing in there when you go over here into Noah and the preparation of the ark I told you this is the chart on the pattern or the plan of salvation so when you go into this one here this is another one of the historical events of the world is so to speak see people have tried to duplicate and replicate it all over the world see but many don't even believe it actually happened but there's actually proof that this event that took place with that flood see look Noah see He's showing up here. Now, this is an ascending plane. This one's descending. This one is ascending. Now, here you have, this is the wickedness that's done as a result of Adam's transgression, the pass upon man. It says the wickedness, see, was full on the earth. See, we all know that story. See, we know that. It was full. It says the, go over there and get it for me. You can find that. Um, where Yahweh said that he has saw the end of all flesh had come before him. And he told Noah, see, see, Noah had, found grace in Yahweh, see, you see what I'm saying? And so he had told Noah how that he could be saved, see, through this calamity that was going to take place on the earth. See, and it's just so much that makes me think of now, where we're at right now, right today, this day, see, this is where we're at, see, as it talks about over there also in the scriptures. And anybody just help, if you find these scriptures, yeah. give, help them, see. So if you can uh, find the scripture where he talks about the end of all flesh had come before him. Yep. Uh, that's Genesis mm -hmm. 6 and 13. Okay. Yahweh said to Noah, I intend to make an end of all flesh, mm -hmm. for, through men, for through men the land is filled with violence, mm -hmm. and behold, I will destroy them and the land. Okay. All right. It's still read a little bit different, but okay. Yeah. The end of all flesh is coming for men. So the wicked was warned. Yahweh told Noah that to make that the, he was him and his family was going to be saved by the building of an ark out here. Now keep in mind these principles because they are very, very important. See, so he told him, look, when he talked to Noah and told Noah that the end of all flesh had come before him, Noah, see, was you know, he didn't have sons, see. But Yahweh had told him in the vision that he gave Noah that of the rain that him, his wife, his three sons, and their wives were going to get into this ark. 
You see what I'm saying? That's what he told him, see? So in order for Noah to have been, to go about doing as Yahweh told him to do, to build this ark, and it took 120 years for him to build this ark, or preparing of the ark, in order for him to do that, see, Noah had seen this rain. See, it said at the time in Genesis there that the earth was being watered by a mist that would come up. And I'm walking outside every morning now. I get up and walk down my street, see? And I'm looking at Yahweh's beautiful creation and on the dew that's on the grass, see? Look, man corrupted things on this earth, but Yahweh's creation is beautiful. And I'm looking at this dew, and I said, it's really something, see? Made me think of this, see? Because that's how the earth is still watered, see? In the morning, you see that dew. What is all that about? Yahweh's got it already orchestrated, already done, see? And so I just made me think of that, see? But anyway, he told him, he had to show him. That's how there never rained from the earth. Why? Because Yah or from the skies, because Yahweh was reserving those waters, see? The waters beneath, from the, and the waters below, he was reserving it for this time because he knows what he's going to do. You see what I'm saying? So this is a beautiful story. So Noah went about preparing the ark, and he preached, prepared, built that ark. It took 120 years, see? Like we like to say, it is, we're in here for 120 minutes. Look, the, we're in the ark now, the preparing of the ark. Look. This is what we're doing, see, for your souls. The preaching of the gospel is preparing you. You understand what I'm trying to say. This is a fact that the only ones that did sustain back here during this time was those in the ark. So we're looking at a principle. That's exactly what we want, see. Now look, they, got, they built the ark, got into the ark, uh, as I said, uh, animals, two by two, if you will, and it uh, goes into detail about even those animals. But look, those eight souls went into that ark. Eight souls is what the Bible said. It don't say eight people, but eight souls, see, because they're going to start over again. And that eight means new beginning. You understand what I'm saying? See, look, Yahweh didn't miss anything. You see what I'm saying? So he had to, so here we're talking about a death. You see what I'm saying? All men was going to die. And that's what the scripture said. They're going to be buried in that waters, if you will, or even in the ark, see, because they're unadated in that ark. You see what I'm saying? And then, see, they, after, 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 after the time allotted that Yahweh has said, see, they, that ark, see, resurrected, see, up there in Mount Ararat. You see what I'm saying? And that's what had happened. You understand? Now, look, Yahweh placed a rainbow in the sky, and that rainbow was likened to Yahweh's covenant that never again will he destroy the earth by water. You see what I'm saying? So, but now these, these things happen as according to the scriptures, a death, a burial, and a resurrection. You see what I'm saying? See, and it's not, it's, we're talking about Noah's Ark, but we're not just talking about Noah's Ark. That's what I want us all to understand. That's what Yahweh's saying to us all. Abraham Melchizedek, we are scripture reader, was about the beautiful scripture read, showing how that we now have a uh, priest said this is the psalm it talked about over there that we have a priest which is truly Yahshua's son not one after the flesh but one that is truly officiating in us every single second he's officiating in us see he's operating causing you to be what you need to be you understand what I'm trying to say you must have that high priest or Yahshua Messiah in you see that's what that's talking about see but this Abraham promised Abraham was promised a son see see in his old age see and he had never he was a hundred and I think Sarah his wife was 99 see and now Abraham was told see and this is the promise up here that was given to him see and Abraham was told that he would have that son see and so true enough in his old age he was given a son but after he was given the son Yahweh told him to take thy son thy only son see you see what I'm saying Isaac and see and sacrifice him unto me you understand now that was a hard one right there but what Dr. Kenley had brought out is that Abraham didn't even mince at those words. You don't have to get the scripture. Go back and do this research yourself. Go back and reread these things that we've been over so many times before. We, he, didn't have to re, he didn't have to mince at it. He told him, see, Abraham, he took the lad, see, and he took the lad and he took them. Now that's over there in Genesis 22 and 9. Someone get it real quick. Mm. That's <clears throat> Genesis 20 two and nine and 20, nah, I'm sorry. Genesis 22 and nine okay and they came to a place which Yahweh had told him of and Abram built an altar there 
and laid the wood in order, mm -hmm. and bound Isaac his son, mm -hmm. and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Okay. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. So he's got his son, and Dr. Kinley brought out the point that this was not just a little boy. Abraham was an old man, so a hundred, see. And, but now, this one, we have it illustrated like it was a little boy, but he wasn't a little boy. It says that he had the knife, see, and he's at the place where he's going to sacrifice. Read. And the angel of Yahweh called unto him out of heaven mm -hmm. and said, Abraham, Abraham. Mm -hmm. And he said, here am I. Mm -hmm. And he said, lay not thine hand upon the lie. Now look at that. He said, lay not your hand. It's so pretty. The knife is a big knife, too. The angels <laughs> coming from the clouds saying, lay not your hand. Now what was Abraham ready to do? He was ready to slay his son. Because that's what Yahweh told him to do. He was going to be obedient unto death. Mm -hmm. No matter how much that hurt, he was going to be obedient. But what Abraham said to the men before they got to this place of the sacrifice, he said, you guys stay here until me and the lad return. Right. What's that all about? Dr. Kinley brought out the in principle. Abraham, see, see, he's showing forth. He already had Isaac dead, buried, and resurrected, see, in his own heart and mind. You see what I'm saying? In principle. See, because he was going to slay his son. Had not the angel stayed his hand. What's that talking about? A death, a bury, and resurrection of Isaac, just as it says here. You see what I'm saying? It's so much in that. But these are the basic principles that I'm just trying to bring out about that death, that burial, and resurrection. This migratory parent, uh, pattern, once again, see, look, they talked about this Paschal lamb down here. Remember, the children of Israel started out in Canaan, see, first of all. See, and then Yahweh told them to get on out of their out of their uh, land, see, to a land that you know not of, is what they said. But then they end up down in bondage for 430 years down here in this Egypt. It came a particular time that Yahweh said he's going to deliver them up out of there. But the way they had were to come up out of there, after all of those years of bondage, see, see, they had to take out a lamb. You see what I'm saying? And that had to kill that lamb. You see what I'm saying? It would have to be the death of that lamb. And then they had to take the blood of that lamb and they had to put it on two, four points of the blood of the door. See, where in the houses, where in they lived. What's that talking about? See, not on the outside of the door, but on the inside of the door. This body or your body, see, that's the house, see, this is the door. See, and his blood has to be in you. You understand? See, that's what that's actually pointing to, to take that lamb. See, couldn't, they had to consume this lamb. They had to consume all of it. None of this lamb could be left until the morning. See, if there was any left, see, they had to share it with others in that group. You see what I'm saying? But it has to, it has to be in them consuming it, if you will, see. And they had, that's was how they were going to come up out of there. See, by that death, see, of that lamb, it being buried in you. See, I'm not, look. That principle of it being buried in you, as well as them going through the divided waters of the Red Sea. You see what I'm saying? They had to be unadated sea, going through that, through that tunnel of that sea. It says that the waters just heaped up on over him, and he went on through on dry ground. You see what I'm saying? And they resurrected out here, you see, in the wilderness of Sinai, if they will. So there was once again a death, a burial, and a resurrection. And I know there's all so much into these these uh, events that took place down here, but that's the principles that I want to bring out because it's truly pointing to something. You see what I'm saying? Then we have this interior, something profound, see? The interior of the pattern, see? And he has written here, Dr. Kenny wrote, the pattern of plan, law, testimony. You see what I'm saying? So it's all according to this. See, that this tabernacle, the interior of the tabernacle, see? Look, there was an altar here that the high priest had to take the altar the sacrifice it had to be a sacrifice that was slain on this altar they had to take the blood on this altar put the blood on this altar see he had to wash the sacrifice here see and then he had to be anointed with the holy the cup of holy anointing oil see at the door you see what i'm saying all of this had to take place the high priest is officiating in this tabernacle but all of this had to take place before the high priest even going to the most or to the holy place here. See, he had to go through a death, if you will, see, a burial, see, and that oil was typifying, testifying to a quickening, if you will. So that's likened to a resurrection, see, all of that before he even gets here to the, uh, or into this most, or this holy place, see. Look at that. I mean, I just think it's so beautiful how Yahweh set it up, see, of what he had to do, showing forth his death, his burial, and his resurrection, see. 
See, and to what? And then once you go through that death, that burial, the resurrection, see, now you're in the holy place here or this sanctuary, see, where you have now have some light. You see what I'm saying? You are being fed with the bread, see. You're saying you have some substance. And Yahshua said that he was the bread that came down from heaven. He said, your fathers had bread in the wilderness. He says, but that bread, see, this, this is the bread that will live forevermore. Talking about himself. You see what I'm saying? He is talking about Yahshua. The Holy Spirit is the bread from heaven. You see what I'm saying? So we had go through this death, this burial, this resurrection places you there at that door. See, the Messiah comes in and say, I am the door. You see what I'm saying? And he is the light. You see what I'm saying? He is the bread. You see what I'm saying? He is the intercession between Yahweh. See, the most holy place where Yahweh's dwell and man. You see what I'm saying? So all of this is going on even in the interior of the pattern. It's a consistent beat that doesn't stop. We go on and on, see. First John 5 and 7, see. Then Yahshua Messiah, let's not forget his baptism and ministry. Then the Messiah, that's where all of these different stories or are, are are events are speaking of is Yahshua the Messiah because this is the fulfillment of all of this. See, that the Messiah was going to come in, see. That's why I said from all the way back here is purpose. He's going to come in to do what was written of him in the law and the prophets or in the scriptures. He's going to fulfill everything. He's got a complete mission. He didn't just come in making some little, little pretty story for Christianity. Mm -hmm. See, so, you know what I'm saying. He didn't come in trying to set up some example for you to follow. Right. He's finishing everything. Right. That's why it says he's the author and the finisher of your faith. You have to see how he set it up. Then you also have to see how he shut it up. That's how we used to say it. In other words, he brought it to an end. He concluded it. It was final here when the Messiah came in. And that's why you have to understand. That's what makes him the mediator of the new covenant or the new testament. Because all of that, see, all of this, see, all of this is bringing you to him who is the fulfillment of all of that, see, is Yahshua Messiah. He's got to come in. He's got to die the death of a lamb, see. Says over here that he was our Passover sacrifice for us. Oh, it's so much. He was baptized, see, fulfilling that. He took that so-called Lord's Supper, fulfilling that. All of those so-called laws that they did there. He is that Passover. When they were trying to do that bread and cup and drink, drinking blood and wine. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. Yahshua is just showing us what he has given us is so profound. Oh, my goodness. We have so much to be happy for. I want someone said one time on the floor and says, when I wake up in the morning, so I says, you know, I forgot how he said it. I think it was Carl. Or who, I, don't, I don't remember. He said, Yahshua, you know, kill that person. You see what I'm saying? In other words, because that's not the one that you want to be governing you. Five minutes. Okay. You don't want that governing you. You want the spirit of the living Elohim, the Holy Spirit, see, governing you in your every waking moment. You see what I'm saying? So it's Joshua who is the true Passover. He is that lamb, see, that died for the sins of the world. You see what I'm saying? And over here in John, see, uh, 5 and 7. Uh, get that for me real quick. 1 John 5 and 7. That's 1 John 5 and 7. I know I was talking about. The death and the burial and the resurrection, synonymous to the blood, the water, and the spirit. See, all pointing to the same thing. Okay, read. For there are three that bear mm -hmm. record in heaven, mm -hmm. the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. That's right. And these three are one. That's right. And there are three that bear witness in earth, mm -hmm. the Spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these, these three agree in one. So that blood is synonymous to the death. The water is, uh, is synonymous to the burial. And the uh, spirit is synonymous to the resurrection, see. And so that is what has transpired. What Yahweh did now, see, now with the death of the Messiah, see, then he then took us to, from this cross. This body was consumed just like that lamb, as I was telling you about there, back there. See, was consumed, see. So this, this body was consumed. They went looking for him. But they couldn't find him. Did nobody move the body? The body was consumed. Yahweh wasn't going to have it that they found a body. Because, see, they've been looking at a body all along. Now you're going to have to see something a little bit more than a body. Right. So they weren't going to find this body. You see what I'm saying? So when you look at it, and then they were talking, one just recently, talking about how the Messiah, he appeared to various ones for some, what, 
was it 50 days or whatever, after the resurrection, see, out of that grave, see, then he came and he appeared to them. But you got to understand, every time he appeared to them, they were seeing a vision. Mm -hmm. He's a spiritual body now. He resurrected a quickening spirit. You understand? Not a physical body. So when they're seeing him at the supper, I'm telling you, we just, just recently went over some of those things. When they saw him at the supper and he sat down and ate with them. It's a vision they're having. That's not something that's physically done. You see what I'm saying? But it looks like that. See my hands? He said, it's a vision that's being had. Now, see, likewise, that's what we're having. It's a vision, see, in our hearts and in our minds. See, because this is where we're at now. Kingdom of Yahshua Messiah, spiritual sacrifices, law of the spirit, all governing us in our hearts and in our mind. <laughs> says the New Testament, that old covenant, all of it was fulfilled with the Messiah. Every last bit of it, from a jot and from a tittle. Nothing we can do from a physical standpoint to worship our creator, Yahweh. Nothing. No genuflexing, no paying money, nothing that we can do. But we better have him in our hearts and our minds so that when you, when Yahshua, see, looks at you, and I'll end up here, I hope somebody got something out of something. You know, I never think of myself as a good speaker or someone being able to tie things up. I always feel like I leave loose ends everywhere. But Yahshua showed me what I know in my heart and in my mind. And see, what he is saying to us, see, right here, is that when he reads you and when he's looking at you, he's penetrating this flesh, not looking at the physical you. Not you, how good you look, how good you think you do, or whatever the case. But what's here in this heart and mind? And what he's looking to find is his son, or that Holy Spirit, see. So if we think we don't have it, or we question it, it's time to start asking, Yahshua, place your spirit in me, see. Place me in the kingdom, see. Because that's how he's reading our souls, and whether or not Yahshua Messiah has been formed in us. That's the Holy Spirit formed in us. You see what I'm saying? That we then no longer really are us. Just want you to understand that. Mm -hmm. Not really. You're not us. You see, you. You see what I'm saying? It's a soul that we have. And that's what Yahweh is reading. And we better, when he looks at you, what he better see is his son. Mm -hmm. That's what he's looking at. His son in you. Yeah, your son. There's my son. Son, come on. You see what I'm saying? That's the key to where it is that we are going to have that eternal life. Not our works, not our kindness, our smiles, or whatever. But he wants to see that Holy Spirit or his son in you, formed in you, to govern you, to will and to do. See, the person someone said on the floor, I think it was, said, I'm not the same. Yahshua showed me as many things about me I have yet to, that he's showing, I'm talking about my own person, so examine yourself. But as many he's changed, I'm not the same one. And I give that, the glory to Yahweh, because it's only Yahweh can fix anything. And don't be afraid to ask him, fix me. Because when you take off this flesh, it's too late then to be worrying about being fixed. But you want to be conformed right now to his glory. I want to encourage the brother. Stick with this gospel. Be diligent. Person said on the floor, the spirit of the speaker said it. Says every day, do something in relationship to this gospel. Praising Yahshua, studying whatever, so that you might be complete, or you might know the things that you must know. See, and Yahshua, as you talk to him through your trials and through your tribulations, see, he will guide you through it. He will cause you to have peace with what it is that you do go through, no matter what it is. You talk to him during the worst times that you have, and you will see how he will cause you to be enduring and, and, and strong only in him. That song, I'll leave with this one last thing, a song that we used to sing in Ypsilanti. I only remember the words, some of them. All of my help comes from above. All of my glory comes from above. All of my joy comes from above. 
All of my peace comes from above. And when I say above, I mean that higher source than what I am. Yahshua the Messiah, who is the Holy Spirit, who is manifesting right now. I thank you for the opportunity and to say anything. Thank you, Dr. Nelson, for that beautiful testimony. And for our uh, last speaker, I believe, of the afternoon, we're happy to call our dean, Dr. Marvin Lewis. Good afternoon, everyone. And I want to start off by saying uh, uh, I enjoyed the previous speakers. And it always amazes me, and I feel compelled to say this frequently. And that is simply that the things that you heard from these previous speakers, now they didn't know any of that before they got here. See, they didn't even have an inkling. They didn't even know who the creator's name was. See, most of us didn't. Some of us heard the name before, but it didn't mean nothing to us. Well, you call him that, and I call him this, and we'll all meet up in heaven. But that's not what it is. That's not how it is, folks. And now it's incumbent upon us, since Yahweh has put us in this position to have this knowledge and understanding, then it's incumbent upon us that we have to tell what Yahweh's shown us, or else you don't want your best friend's blood to be on your head. <laughs> See, even though you may run the risk that they may not be your best friend anymore. You understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> but what's more important than their friendship is their soul. Right. See, so is yours is important to you. If it isn't, it ought to be. See, and if it's not, then you keep coming down here. It will get to be that way. See, it'll mean something to you. Now, the previous speaker, the things they talked about, we learned in this school from this vision of Revelation. None of us figured nothing out. None of us added to it and didn't take anything from it either. See, we had nothing to do with this. This is a gift from the creator himself. See, and that's the only way you have the ability to express any truth at all about your creator as he really is and actually exists. It's a gift. He just has to give it to you. See? Then he'll give it to you. Then he's got to make you understand it. What do you mean? Uh, what do you mean by this? What do you mean by You don't know nothing about that. Listen, we know now from the way the world is going that this, it's bad. It's going bad. And many people in the world have gotten hopeless. See, now in most religious organizations, what they're preaching to you now is they're preaching to you that go to church, pray, because there's a way out of this situation that the world is in now. But I'm going to tell you, folks, there's no way out. <coughs> Yahweh has purpose that this creation, as you know it, is going to end. Now, he's always done that. This ain't nothing new. We didn't know it. See, we had no idea. Listen, when Adam and Eve were here in the garden, see, they were in their, if you want to say it like this, they were in their own little world, weren't they? See, this garden was in fruition. They had everything they wanted to eat. They was friends with all the animals. <laughs> See, everything was hunky-dory, and they only had eyes for each other. Good morning, baby. See, that's what we call ideal, everything. Isn't that right? Now, they were in their own little world, but that world had to end. They had to come down out of there. Why? Because Yahweh has a purpose. See, Yahweh is giving you an example. You can't look at yourself your relationship, your surroundings, and count that as glorification. 
Because it's not. Yahweh is the only glorified one. And Joshua the Messiah is the only glorified one. So now if you want to be glorified, guess where you have to be? You have to be in that body. You have to be in that spiritual body in order for you to be glorified. And that's what we're trying to get across to the world. That's what Yahweh has blessed us with and gotten across to us. Our understanding in that. See, and that's, listen, there ain't no amount of money worth that. None. Because what the truth will give you is it'll give you some peace and quiet. See, you won't be running around here talking about, should I get a gun or should I not get a gun? See, should I get two instead of one? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Because you know this is operating according to Yahweh's purpose. He never intended for us to stay on this earth forever. Never. This is physical. All this is is a mere reflection of Yahweh and his purpose. See, that's why you got to take off this flesh. That's why you got to leave here. This physical. See, every event that went on up here is showing one thing. See, there was a coming down. See, this physical creation has to go away. Has to leave. That's what all these are. They were in their own little world here. That world ended. This here, Noah, the preparation in the ark. See, when Noah and his sons and their wives resurrected into this new earth state, see, they were on the top of the world. See, all them satanic spirits had been consumed by them fish in the ocean. So they were in their own little world and it was great, but it had to end. Why? Because it was a physical creation and Yahweh was just using this physical creation to show you something spiritual. See, not for you to go around here praying the trees, see, and building up big edifices to, to show how, how much you appreciate this physical creation. Because it has always ended before it is going to end again. So don't run around here looking for the politicians to fix something. It's unfixable. And Yahweh didn't intend for it to be fixed. What Yahweh intended for it to do was to show you something about him. To show you the truth about what life after death is. See? Life after death. See, and I learned this coming into this school, sitting in front of this vision and revelation. And visions and revelations are not anything new. Now, ask your minister about it who knows every scripture in that Bible. And you ask him about visions and revelations. He can't explain them, but he has to admit they've been expressed in this book. See, that's the elevation of Yahweh's purpose. It takes you from a carnal mind to a spiritual mind. And you can't see somebody, you can't see a spiritual mind in somebody. If they don't express to you what Yahweh showed them, you don't know they got a spiritual mind. And most of us, when we first hear a spiritual mind being expressed to us, <laughs> didn't understand a word they were saying. See, and like the first speaker had to say, see, the, the, the mercy of Yahweh just kept dragging you back down here. And that's how he does it, too. See, many of us think we came down here on our own volition. Well, when I heard that name, I knew there was something to it. <laughs> so I made it my point to get back down there. No, Yahweh just picked you up. See, where you were at. And he gave you a reason to come back here. See, whatever you think your reason was, whether you think it was your intellect, now, some of us came back down here out of fear. <laughs> Saying, I'm scared to go against what they said down there. Because I know some of the things they do, they, it pierced your heart. See, it pierced your soul. And even though you didn't like it, see, you knew it was the truth. See, and it's fearful for you to go against the truth. You remember all those days <laughs> where your parents used to tell me, now you mark my words. <laughs> if you do so and so, that's going to happen. And after that rail happened to you enough times, well, you got scared. You said, don't say that. <laughs> you always saying something, Mama. You always saying something, Dad. 
And the reason you didn't like that because it came out true. See? So now Yahweh's using that as an example because, ah, save you if you try getting up. I know it's a struggle for you to get up sometimes. <laughs> But see, Yahweh used that for an example, see? And that's what we experience now. But see, as we grow in faith and knowledge and understanding, then we begin to pay heed to when Yahweh's talking to you. <laughs> see, when he tells you to do something, you don't fight no more. You just go ahead on and move along with the flow. Ain't that right? Yeah. See? And then come back to class and he's in class session, see? And then you, when you give an opportunity, see? Then you praise Yahweh for what he's shown you. See, one more time. See, and that's all you have time for. You have time for that one more time for him to solidify in you what is necessary in order for you to be saved and to resurrect. So all these worlds change. Now down here with the children of Israel. Now we talk about this all the time. The world knows all about this. The world knows this story real well, better than me and you know it. I know they knew it better than me before I came down here. See, but now what this is here, this is just an example of Yahweh's purpose. The children of Israel, they were in their own little world here. They were in, a, in bondage, so they weren't in a, such a great world. So it shouldn't have made no difference then whether it ended or not. But the Egyptians were the rulers of the world. They were in their own world, and they were happy as a hog in slop. They were tickled to death. Everything they wanted, that's what they got. That's what the world is fighting over now. Do you know that? You realize this is the same thing they're fighting over now? See, this country, that country, everybody wants to be like this, want to rule the world, want to do what they want to do. That's the same thing with going down here. The children of Israel, Yahweh, brought them down into bondage. Now, why did he put them in bondage? Because he's trying to show you something about this world and the world to come, which is like an under Canaan land. So what Yahweh did was took them out of this state of existence, which was a hopeless state of existence. And that's where you're headed to right now, folks, in this world. It's a hopeless state. You got a bunch of politicians that don't know nothing about nothing or nobody, but yet they won't shut up. See, you ask any one of them, they got a fix for it. Well, fix it if you got a fix. They just rambling on. So the only way it's going to get fixed is the same way this got fixed. Yahweh going to have to fix it. And he's already got the purpose in operation how he's going to fix it. And how he's going to fix it, he's going to have to do it like this, like he's always done it. And like we finally came to understand since we came down this organization how Yahweh does it. Is he has to elevate you in your heart and in your mind. See, he has to make you realize where you came from, who your father is, who you're the offspring of. Now when you come to realize and understand that, then you can be elevated beyond this world and you won't care what happens in this creation. I don't give a hoot what they do because you know and we know that Yahweh has already purposed that all this is going to end. It's going to go away, folks. See, you have here the agents and dispensation. And we look at this chart. I've looked at this chart for years. There are people here that know this chart inside out, upside down, the front of it, the back of it. Almost every word that's written on it. But the reality of this is simply this. Is Yahweh is manifesting his purpose to his creation, see, which we are a part of. We're created too, see, just like this earth plane. Yahweh never purposed for this physical creation to continue on forever. Why? Because Yahweh is spirit. And Yahweh is eternal. So if Yahweh began in the beginning was pure spirit, then it has to end that way. The beginning was pure spirit, 
That's why it's on this chart. It's depicted in this cloud. See, in this fiery cloud. That's the way it began. That's the way it has to end. So what's all this stuff in between? That is a education for the sons. So what Yahweh does through this vision of revelation, and Yahweh's always, when I first got down here and they said a vision, I said, oh, here we go. First thing I did was grab my wallet. See, because that talk always meant to me they're coming for something in a minute. See, never knew anything about it. But once Yahweh reveals his, the revelation of his purpose, see, then you understand that the only thing that really ever mattered to Yahweh was that pure spirit state. Why? Because it's eternal. It's a representation of his existence. Yahweh is eternal. And listen, if you are going to be eternal in righteousness, peace, joy, and happiness, or if you're going to be the bride with your husband, and that's what everybody in the world wants to be, right? They want to be happily married. See, striving for it, lying about it, do anything to try to get it. I got married. I was happily married, too, most of the time. <laughs> see? But see, because we're carnal, and Yahweh knows he made you like that. Why do you think Yahweh had to come down himself to deliver us? We didn't have it in us, folks. See, because we have limitations. And the first limitation you have is your mental capacity is limited. I don't care how much of a genius you think you are. Talking about going to explain to you what's out in space. You went out in space and still didn't know what you were looking at. Still can't explain what a black hole is. <laughs> and you flew right past one. See, because you're limited. That's why Yahweh had to manifest in the flesh himself. See? Yahweh didn't, couldn't get no pope to do it, and he couldn't get no dean to do it either. So Yahweh, listen, he's the author and the finisher. He wrote the book, he read the book, he explained the book, and he closed the book. That's what he's going to do at the end of this creation. You understand? And now, where do we come in? If you're a son... When Yahshua the Messiah resurrected, that was your resurrection too. <laughs> see, because after he resurrected, see, and when the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, that was your invitation to come on in. See, but now you have to know and understand that. See, and you have to trust Yahweh that he knows what he's doing. And he's doing what he knows how to do. And that's to resurrect you from a death state. See, deliver you from all this physical mess. See, limping around, crimping around, trying to act like I'm, like I was when I was 30. Now, we know that's a lie. <laughs> but we all want to, want to be that. But see, Yahweh knows what our infirmities are. See, and that's the mercy of Yahweh. He just comes and gets you however you are. See, come and get you however, as bad as you were. And if you want to know the truth, there was nobody in here worse than the next person sitting next to him. <laughs> nobody was as bad as you. See, but Yahweh overlooked that. That's that mercy. And it's Yahweh's mercy that you see all this going in the world now, all this mess going on. See, that's Yahweh's mercy because if it continues on, folks, guess what's going to happen? It's going to get worse. You're liable to see blood running in the streets because that satanic spirit is running amok. He knows he has but a short time, and he's going to make the most of it. In other words, you heard the saying like this, right? Going out with a flame. <laughs> going out in a flame. See, so that satanic spirit's going to go out in a bang. See, he's going to drag everything with you. That's why it's important. People that new people, members that are watching this telecast, the best thing you could possibly do in your life is to continue to sit in front of this vision of revelation. Because this is the way Yahweh has always worked. This is not no new thing. See, starting right here with Abraham. 
And that's what these charts are for. See these pictures here? A picture's worth a thousand words. See, I can sit up here and talk till next Sunday. And you still won't understand nothing about this chart right here. You know why? Because when I say dark, you see something else in your mind. When I say black, you see gray. You understand what I'm saying? But now a picture, now there's no, there's no mistaking about what this is. This is Michael driving them out of the garden. So this world ended. There's your proof right there. It's in your book. Now we put it on paper here so you can say, oh, now I understand that. It's just like your children. If you want them to know what two is, what do you do? You hold up two objects. This is one. This makes two. So then they associate it. OK, two. So I go get me two spoons. Now they know. They go back in there and they come out with two spoons. So this is what Yahweh's doing here. Listen, Yahweh knows our limitations. Our limitations are simply this. How highly we think of our own intellect. Because we think we're so smart that nobody can tell us anything. Oh, it ain't nothing to that. I know about that. So what Yahweh does is just break it down into the simplicity of it. And what he does is he gives you undeniable stuff. Now, how undeniable is this? Just simple, basic stuff. The name of your creator is Yahweh. Well, how are you going to prove that? Well, that ain't what my book says. That ain't what my grandmama taught me. Well, y'all do y'all thing, and I'm going to do my thing. Keep on. See, so what Yahweh has to do is have against your own self. Yahweh has to deliver you from death, hell, and the grave, and why are you screaming and fighting the whole time he's delivering you? That's what I did. See, I never, the first year I came to these classes, I never came to class because I wanted to be here. You say, ooh, I wouldn't admit to that. After I came to class for three or four times, you know why I came after that? I was afraid not to. <laughs> I heard enough to know that there was something to this. And I didn't understand all of it, but I was afraid not to come back down here again. Because Yahweh showed me enough about him that, listen, I'm not playing. This is the real deal. And either you obey and be obedient or you'll be lost. Now, that's what he wrote in me. And see, now I've been coming here ever since. And every time I come here, he fortifies me. See, with some little bit of wisdom, some little bit of knowledge, with a little bit of understanding of something I didn't quite understand before. See, and just plants my feet. See, in his mercy. I'm just counting on that. I'm not counting on you. See, not counting on me. I'm counting on Yahshua the Messiah and the things that he promised. See, and he promised that he would move this out of the way, which he's done. And now we have to accept that. See, keep your money in your pocket. Listen, it's donations that support this building that we're able to come here. And we're not really worried about your, whether or not you donate or not. I'm not going to hop down on the floor and do no dancing and pray and try to get you to unease some of them dollars. Because Yahweh knows what we need, and he's going to make sure we get it. See, that's how merciful he is. See, in spite of our meanderings of our carnal mind, in spite of the things we do contrary to the the purpose of Yahweh, see, that we do every day. Who in here don't need to be fixed? I know I need to be fixed every day. But in spite of all that, in spite of us still doing that, Yahweh says, get that little $2 out of your pocket and give it to the girl. 
so you'll have a place to come and get straightened out some more. So now that's mercy. None of us in here are wealthy enough that we say, don't worry, I got it, it's on my back. I got you, don't worry, let's go to the Taj Mahal, let's build us a Taj Mahal. <laughs> but Yahweh just makes a way. And it's nice, it's, it's nice to know and understand that because what that allows you to do, it allows you to sleep at night. It allows you to go to bed and turn the news off. And when they say catastrophic, COVID's coming again, you say, COVID, smove it, so what? You understand? See, you're not worried about that because Yahweh has already manifested that to us. See, the children of Israel, not Abraham, and I, don't, I know I don't have but a couple minutes left. I really didn't want to take up all the time, but Yahweh's showing me sometimes you have to deliver what Yahweh's shown you. So you can't just always sit down and smug and eat off of other people, eat off of what Yahweh's shown them. See, all of us have a testimony. And what should be on our hearts and minds is whenever we do get an opportunity to speak is you testify to what Yahweh's shown you. See, not what some dean taught you. See, I don't care how much you read that textbook. It comes by revelation. So you have to give credit where credit's due. That Yahweh just allowed you to understand something about this. You are sitting here in the presence of this vision and revelation because Yahweh willed it, not because you wanted to be here. So what Yahweh did, see, Canaan's land. Now Abraham walked the breadth and the width of Canaan's land. Now Yahweh had him up there in Canaan's land, showing him Canaan's land before they even came down here. Before he brought him down into Egypt in the bondage. So you say, well, why didn't he just leave Abraham up there and give him everything he got? Because Abraham would have thought that he did something. Well, look, at, look, Yahweh made me the dean. I must have been doing something right. Well, Yahweh showed me that, so that must be something to me. He ain't showed you yet. Now, listen, you may not realize it, but subconsciously all of us dealt with that at one time or another. <laughs> See, that's a carnal mind in a spiritual place. It's not going to match. See, the bottom's going to fall out of it. So what Yahweh has to do is take you through life experiences, and you think Yahweh's punishing you. No, what Yahweh's doing is he's shaping you. You understand? See, he's making you what you need to be saved. See, and many of us come kicking and screaming and fighting all the way. And some of us come just like a lamb. See, so Yahweh has whatever it takes for everybody that believes and trusts, see, in your Savior. Now, Yahweh got what you need. And listen, through Yahshua the Messiah, he'll give it to you. All you have to do is sit down and shut up. See, and testify to those things that Yahweh has proven to you. See, through Yahshua the Messiah. First speaker did an excellent job of that. See, telling about where she was and where she is now. And listen, here's the thing about it. She even has a knowledge of where she's going. <laughs> you know, a lot of people in the world can't tell you that. They say, what, what are you going to be doing in the future? <sighs> I don't know. I'm looking for another job or I'm trying to find a bigger house. And they ask you, what you going to do in the future? What you going to be doing in the future? I'm going to be with Joshua. <laughs> That's why I'm going to be in the future, however long it takes. I'm going to be glorified with the Father. That's why I'm going to be. Now, you worry about your little house. I'm going to worry about my house in heaven. See, that's the house I'm worried about. And guess what? You run around here, down here, trying to have a big house. I'm talking about a house that's big enough for every creature. <laughs> and have your own face. Joining a whole new family. See, where everybody is happy and harmonious. See, and in one accord. See, in agreement. Just peace, joy, and happiness all the time. 
And you'd be lucky to get that for two, 10 seconds a day now. But don't be worried. I just wanted to say a few things about not being worried about the conditions of this world and the way it's headed. It's heading right where it's going to go. And it's headed where every world that Yahweh, listen, you see that chart? See, every one of those, every one of those dispensations and ages that was its own world at the time, and they all ended. Every physical age ended. You have to go to the day of eternity, which is a spiritual age, which is without the body. See, so this physical creation, don't worry about them fixing it. It's unfixable. It was never intended to be fixed. So prepare yourself for the world that's to come. That's a spiritual world. So you have to elevate your understanding, your consciousness, your awareness of what Yahweh really is and how he actually exists and what it's required on us to be a part of that glorified body at the instantaneous revelation of Yashin Messiah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lewis. And that does bring a conclusion to our class. Um, once class has ended, we ask that you just keep your seats for one second for an announcement. We hold our classes here on, on Zoom from Tuesdays and Thursdays from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and on Zoom and in person on Sundays from 11 to 1. Our school is supported by your donations and we do appreciate your donations. Once again, we want to welcome back Dr. Martu Fleshman. It's so good to see you and let us all stand to be dismissed. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power before all time now and forever. Let us all say hallelujah. hallelujah. Is that ended, Dorian? As we come down to the end of each one of these ages, there is not going to be but a very few people saved. All right, Don. That's all. That's right. That's right. Now you're talking about Jesus jumping down through the sky. And all of these folks that claim to be saved, it's going to be a different story. Yeah. That's true. Do you understand? Yeah. 
Now you're going to have to be responsible for your own self. That's right. That's right. You're going to have to quit depending on these hypocrites. Amen. Just like Dr. Tran read to you about that as Messiah was in his day. Hey, do you understand? Now he got crucified. Of course, that was prophetic. Yeah. For telling them the truth. Mm 